I'm Liz Clayman with today's Clayman Confidential. I'm at the SALT Conference in Las Vegas, here with former Prime Minister of Greece, George Papandreou. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Liz. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, we've got a situation that looks very similar to what Greece has been going through. In Illinois, you have protests, you have a budget that is a mess, underfunded pensions and skyrocketing property taxes. I have to ask, is Illinois the next Greece? Good question. I'm not an expert on what's happening in Illinois, but I come to what I saw with the tax problem in Greece, and this is not just a local problem. What we see now is huge tax evasion, through, we see this with the Panama Papers, with the uh, WikiLeaks in Luxembourg, that we have offshores and tax havens around the world, and that's basically robbing our countries of very important revenues. So when I tried to hit tax evasion in Greece, uh, and I had to hike taxes, a lot of people were able to take their money out, not declare it, and hide it somewhere around the world. This is a global problem. It's a European problem. It's a U.S. problem. Now, that's one thing we have to tackle. Now, can Illinois do it alone? No. But bringing in transparency, bringing in better governance, bringing in um, best practices and how you deal with this is going to be important. Otherwise, you're going to put the burden on the middle class and the poor that don't really have the possibility to tax evade. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. It is the middle class and the poor who are protesting, and they think that the solution in Illinois is to tax traders at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or the hedge fund guys. They feel that they should be paying more in taxes. You know, at a time when some people perceive them as the job creators, is that really the way to go, whether it's Greece, Illinois, or anywhere else in the world? Two things here. Yes, I would not be against taxing the hedge funds, but do it in a way where there's a level playing field. You can't do it just in Illinois because they're just going to move out and go somewhere else. So you have to do this at, at least at the U.S. level and maybe at the global level and so that they will be competitive. They'll stay competitive with others. The second is we need some public investment around the, around the world and, and particularly in the developing country. We can't expect, and, but we need to work with the private sector in this. Taking, taking Europe, for example, we need a stimulus. Um, Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, uh, has been doing a QE over the last year or two. But he's saying, I don't, quantitative easing is not going to be enough. Um, we need some form of stimulus. Okay, well, just and so you know, we had an $830 billion stimulus in the U.S., and much of it went to block grants or keeping people employed versus big shovel-ready projects. Well, you know, you shovel-ready unemployment benefits don't quite square with a lot of people who pay taxes and felt that the that that you know package should have been used in a more appropriate way. Well, I I won't disagree with you on that. I don't know the details of the package here in the United States, but I think if we were to work public sector with the private sector to say, what are the projects that are not just going to stimulate our economy, maybe not just going to allow for more consumerism, but what are the things that the U.S. needs? I know in Europe we could say we need uh, a big railroad system, you know, a new transportation system. We have the East and the West, you know, there used to be the Cold War, where it was the Soviet Union. We are not linked. We have the North and the South. We need an energy grid. We need uh, alternative energy or green energy, as you want to call it. Let's, let's invest in that. Now is the time to actually borrow from the markets because the, the interest rates are very low. That's good for the future generations. We should be able to tell our children and our, you know, the millennial generation, we're investing, we're going to invest in, in education, we're going to invest in the infrastructure, we're going to make our country more competitive or our regions more competitive, we're talking about Europe, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, let's say, China that is now investing in this infrastructure and will be ahead of us in, uh, in, this, in a decade or so. Let me just quickly ask you, to Greece, there is a big debt payment that Greece must make in July to the IMF, to the European Union. Will Greece default on that? No, Greece now has just taken new austerity measures. We have made huge sacrifices over the last six years. I would say a recession over the last nine years. I believe now that, um, well, first of all, we're getting we're getting help for to pay off pay this off, and we want to go out into the markets. Things will stabilize in Greece now. Uh, I believe that um, even though that's a very big bur big burden on the Greek people, uh, there will also be a deal on the debt, so that the, the, the uh, there'll be a further lightening of the debt. I think now is the opportunity for investment in Greece. Now is the time when um, 
They're great opportunities. Prices have adjusted. Um, but people don't want to invest when they see Molotov cocktails being thrown. They get nervous. I, I can understand that, but that's the very, very small, small minority. Greece is a stable country. It's a peaceful country. It's a beautiful country. It's got great opportunities, whether it's in agricultural products. I mean, the, the, the Mediterranean or Greek, Greek diet is, 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 you know, something you can invest in, real estate, green energy, um, fisheries. Well, you know, here in the United States, number one, number Greek one, yogurt is the hottest Greek yogurt, thing in the yes, world. absolutely. So, well, <laughs> yes, I know President Obama, he said he eats it every morning. I think so, a lot of people do. I, I yeah. do have to, to focus one thing, though, the migrant situation. On the island of Lesbos, there were so many migrants coming from Syria, from the Middle East. Is that going to break the back of Greece financially? That is a good question. We we were more a transit country, and, and most of the migrants, refugees, went up to Northern Europe, but quite a few have stayed in Greece. There's now a deal with Turkey so that they stay in, in Turkey. They've been fighting the traffickers, the human traffickers, a lot of money in there, over a billion uh, in, in, in profits from these this, this illegal uh, trade. But the, this, the, the key issue is, is to solve the Syrian problem. So. Um, in the end, we have to look at the key issues. Secondly, we have to see how we even invest in these people. These, are, these refugees want most of them to go back to their country at some point. Let's make them, you know, understand what our democracies are, what our societies are, and give them the skills, the training. They will be the engineers and the architects of a new society in the Middle East we, tomorrow. We can only hope. And that's hope. something that we owe, I think, to the Middle East the developed world, because we really need to see a Middle East which is peaceful, and uh, they could be the architects of a very different uh, peaceful Middle East. One last question about Illinois. If you were to warn Illinois off from making a mistake that Greece made, what would that be? What warning would you give Illinois? I would say that the first is to try to bring in, make sure your own citizens, uh, citizens of Illinois, uh, participate in the decision-making and understand what the problems are they should be part of the solution and not don't do things against them it may be difficult decisions very difficult decisions will have to be made um, whatever the decisions are to be made try to bring them in thank you so much thank Wonderful. you it's Liz, a thank you to very have much you. thank you Prime Minister George Papandreou watch all of the interviews from here at the SALT conference in Las Vegas on LizClayman.com and watch Countdown to the Closing Bell every weekday, 3 p.m. Eastern on the Fox Business Network.